I gotta do it like a gun, like in, uh, where do they do that, where they pull the trigger with their pinky? Okay, go for it. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to explode. Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Making Mead with your premium one gallon starter kit. So, fermentation has happened. It's been two weeks. We did one nutrient addition on this on day two. Uh, we added about a gram and a half, or a gram of Fermaid K, um, also included in your kit. So now, it's time to transfer. We're going to use the auto siphon, the mini auto siphon, made for smaller batches. We're gonna use our one gallon carboy, and then we're gonna close everything up with our airlock and our 38 millimeter um, <coughs> cap with an airlock hole. Yes, and just to say, if you're watching this video and you didn't see the first video of us making the mead, cruise back one video to, uh, what did we name that video? How uh, to use your mead starter kit. Yeah, making mead with your mead yeah, starter kit. Yeah, making mead with your mead starter kit. It's in our how-to playlist. Yep. Uh, that's the first video that, so we got a three-part series. So first video, uh, making it, brewing it, uh, racking and transferring. Third video, we'll be bottling. Yes. So I just want to put that out there because Artie didn't say it. Yes. And it's not on his notes. Thank you. He gives me notes because <laughs> he says I don't stay on task. <laughs> so this is our summer summer slammer recipe. This is coming right in about 5.6%. Um, gravity reading should be at a thousand by now. So we're we're gonna transfer this over. We're gonna show you exactly how to do it. First and foremost, the most important part from here on is sanitization. So we've got our big bucket of sanitizer back here hiding behind the mead. Um, so Josh is gonna take the auto siphon and run some sanitizer through it. And I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna get transferring. This is a- uh, Auto siphon, brand new tubing. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, if you get new tubing, sometimes it's sort of nice to lay it out to flatten it out or get a little more. Yeah, and it'll flatten out a little water. bit in your warm water too. And we usually use like lukewarm water for our sanitizer. So the, the, the key here, and we already dipped this entire bottle in sanitizer. You can kind of see a little bit of the foam. Oh, the foam's gone, but. There's still bubbles in there. Yeah, this there's is still 4K. bubbles in there. You can see that. Yeah, <laughs> we do this in 4K, guys. Um, You're so don't fear the foam. If there's a little bit of, of precipitation or, or sanitizer at the bottom, don't worry about that. That's not gonna mess with your mead. It's not going to break the product. So don't worry about that. So now, we're gonna open this guy up. Oh yeah, fermentation has happened. You can smell, the, there's a little bit of sweet honey, a little bit of sulfur. So your, your kit also comes with this, this super fancy auto siphon clamp that clicks right onto the auto siphon. Josh will show you here in a second. As soon as he gets all the sanitizer out of the siphon. Yeah, just make sure you get all of it out. Yeah, because a little bit is fine, but you don't want like... Yeah, because it'll get on the other side of this gasket, just tip it upside down in your bucket, you know, and just exactly. put your hands in the sanitizer, sort of like what I was doing. It helps. Yep. And then just run it dry a little bit just to force that air through there. Exactly. And then you're pretty set. So the, the most important part, since Josh's hands are sanitized and mine aren't, um, one of the most important things is to get that tubing all the way in the bottom of this, uh, this bucket this bucket, this carboy. Yeah, because you don't want to sp really splash it in there. Yeah, well, exactly. I guess you could you gas it and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to splash a little bit. There's there's really no way around that, but you want to minimize that as don't much as touching. possible. Sorry. What are you doing? Sorry. Savage. <laughs> so let's transfer. Um, <clears throat> we're all set up. The auto siphon's right above the lees. The the tubing is all the way or very close to the bottom of your carboy. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing you can do, this doesn't come with your kit. Yeah. This is just a, a little winemaker's trick that we've learned over the years. These little handheld CO2 cartridges take these little 16 gram. Ooh, like that. They take <laughs> these little 16 gram CO2 cartridges and the, the handheld charger, you can, it, it's great for putting in and you can purge all of the oxygen out of it so that you can make sure that you have a nice barrier, so. Yeah, because there's not much going on in here except for aging. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. So the way it works is CO2 is heavier than oxygen, 
So you fill it with CO2 and you have a nice blanket of CO2 in between. <laughs> Can you stop that? <laughs> it's really cold too. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so the, the CO2 will create a blanket between your product and the oxygen as it goes out. As you can see. All right, mead's ready. Purged, right. sanitized. Sanitized our hands and try not to drip into it. But all you do with this is pump it a couple times until the siphon starts and then you're good. And then just, just let it happen. Um, <clears throat> usually this has a little bit more aeration on the way through than we like. We like to have that thing all the way at the bottom. But that being said, we purged it with CO2. We're not super worried about oxidation happening because we've, we've really done our best to take the right steps, you know what I mean? So now we just kind of watch it. Um, you notice that the, the bucket we have, our house bucket, has a little spigot on it. Um, we don't generally transfer from the spigot unless we're, this is, unless we're bottling something. Um, just because you're gonna pull yeast stuff and leaves and stuff here, yours will not have a spigot unless you want one on there, which that can be arranged too. Um, but so that's that's just we. This is our our house bucket that we use for all kinds of one gallon experimental things. So sometimes we bottle condition them. So what Josh <laughs> is doing is <laughs> don't cough in your meat. <laughs> uh, that was close. That was close. Uh, what Josh is doing is is he's just tilting it the the leaves are pretty or the, the yeast cake you know it, it's it's pretty compact on the bottom so he's just gently tilting it to get more of the the clear mead over to the bottom of the auto siphon so the auto siphon doesn't stall so looks like i was a little off on my water calculations which happens sometimes um, ideally you want this as full to the top as you can get it but we do have this this fun CO2 gun. So what we're gonna do? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, what we're gonna do is purge out, do a really nice purge, so it's all CO2 in there, and then we're gonna take our sanitized airlock and 38 millimeter stopper, and we're just gonna put that right on top, and then we're gonna let this sit for a couple weeks. I mean, it'd be best if we were up here. Yeah. What's I, up with the water? I, ideally, you want to be right up at the top. This is good troubleshooting. Because this doesn't just happen to me. What to do when things go wrong in racking. Exactly. Keep going. Keep <laughs> going. Because we're, we're not going to waste this. No. It's still good product. Yeah. It's just uh, with that much in there, you know, that's a lot of oxygen. But <clears throat> we pushed most of it out with the CO2. Yeah, it's a lot of oxygen. It's a lot of potential for oxidation. Um, so it's, it's, it's not ideal. But at least we have a way to move forward. We purged all the oxygen out. And now you just... You let this sit. Uh, with with the summer slammer, you want to let it sit for a couple weeks. I put some cool timestamps on here. So for lower gravity, anything five to seven percent, um, a month or less is fine. Uh, there's everything that's going to happen is going to happen within there. It'll get better in the bottle, but you don't have to let it sit like meads traditionally. You know, people are like, well, I don't touch it for a year. With with the summer slammer, you're fine. That's it's it's made to be ready quick. It's made to come together quick. Um, for medium gravity, which is about 18 to 18, eight to 13 percent, um, three to six months is fairly typical. And and all of these things you can kind of taste along the way, especially if you have your handheld CO2 charger to purge out oxygen every time you you pull a sample. Um, and then for high gravity, anything 14 plus, six months to two years. And again, that's going to be a lot of you know, you want to give it six months and then start tasting it once every month or once every couple months. Yeah. Because uh, you can really taste the difference. It, at first, with those <laughs> higher gravities, it, it really, like our, our pink honey pot, yeah. that's like four pounds in a gallon. It's a monster. The honey flavors start coming back, too. Which yeah. Is sort of fun. It's at first, it depending upon your gravity, it can be sort of warm, you know, but you let it age a little bit. I just opened up a meat that I had laying around for 
five years now, or that one? Five. Yeah, that one, you could taste a, a lot of honey in it, and that was like 18%. Yeah. And I, the only reason I didn't drink it is because I forgot I had it, and as soon as I saw I had it, I drank it. So it's a good thing I didn't know where it was for a while. <laughs> well, we drank one of those on live, too. I know. I don't and even know where the rest of them I have a box of them here, but it looks like my box is pretty light, so somebody got in there. I have no idea what that's in reference to. Yeah. Stay tuned. Check out um, video number three. Yep. Bottling. Check out video number three. Bottling. Your mead. <laughs> your mead. <laughs> and, and that's how we got it. Hopefully this helped you to, you know, figure out how to transfer and little things to look for and little tips and tricks that we've learned over the years. And and you got to do your thing with the bell. Oh, yeah. Like and subscribe. Place a comment down there if you have questions about how we transferred, rack and transfer, yep. call us out if we didn't sanitize something. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff like that. Hit the bell if you're into it. And uh, tune in for the third part of this small part series of how to do a one gallon meat kit. Yep. From yep. brewing to package. Exactly. Brew on. Brew on. Yes. I like beer. <laughs>